Um, so hello everyone, uh, um, I am an application engineer at Altair UK um, and we both work together on looking at the academic side of Altair. Now for this session what I'll be taking you through is looking at Inspire Motion and understanding multi-body dynamics. So some of you may have already started doing some of this but some of you might have never actually come across MBD before. So within my session we're going to address what multi-body dynamics is we're going to then also start talking about the software um, and seeing what kind of simulations you can make with it. And last but not least, we'll talk about the benefits in looking at MBD and we can address any questions that you might have at the end as well. So like Jan said earlier on, a lot of times when you're looking at simulation work, um, you use it as like a final validation, you know, ages back when computing resources were very limited, you would only use FEA as a form to, to validate something, to make sure that, you know, your, your design is good enough before uh, sending out to being made. And that was, you know, back in the 1980s, the 1990s, where we didn't have that much computing power. Now, the more computing power we had, what we realized is that we're going to start pushing for simulation driven design. And what that means is that you take your designs and you put them through simulations from the very beginning during its concept phases. So you know exactly that you're designing it to be as efficient and as uh, effective as possible so that it's always doing its job. It can be as lightweight and uh, you know that it's always performing to the best of its ability to the way it's going to be used. And like, you know, some of you had already asked as well earlier, you know, how do we make sure that it's also manufacturable? How do we make sure that it's performing right? This is what we call the balancing act. So anything that you do create, you always have different manufacturing constraints that you can implement and inspire to make sure that it is manufacturable. And there's also the structural analysis that you can then look at afterwards to understand its performance. So understanding its key performance indicators, where your main stresses are, how much it's deflecting by. And this is what we mean by, you know, analyzing, generating, and then simulating it as well. It's all part of this simulation driven design balancing act. Now within the world of CAE, there's lots of different disciplines and there's lots of different sectors of it as well that you can look into. So where we start looking at uh, MBD, this is where we start looking at multi-body dynamics. You also have finite element analysis in itself. And within finite element analysis, you can then start splitting into different sectors like NVH. You can look at durability. We can also start looking at crash and impact analysis. We then need to consider within those crash scenarios about our occupant safety and pedestrian protection. And anything that we design, it's going to be useless if it's not going to be manufacturable. So we always need to make sure that we can then look into the manufacturing simulations as well. And all of these just basically come into context of the fact that this is CAE. It's something for us to use in our workflows for designing, and it gives us a base point. So usually with our workflows, you know, how do we simulate them? We can either replicate physical tests, but say if we don't replicate physical tests, we know exactly how it's going to be used in real life. So say if you're trying to model a computer mouse, you know exactly how it's being held, how it's being used, and that's what we can replicate in our simulations. But then there are times like, say if you're looking at a suspension system, you don't always know the loads that are acting on your parts, and you don't always know exactly if you've got the right motion assigned to it. Now that's when we start looking at, you know, a multi-body dynamics to then take through into a linear static analysis to then take through into optimization. What I also wanted to let you know is that, you know, you're not just limited to the one uh, area of engineering. With all of our tools, you can look into biomedical, you can look into commercial goods, and you can even look into the data side as well. So one of the things that we're looking at from multi-body to linear static analysis, you know, on YouTube last year, I did do a video for suspension design, where you can start looking at generating your dynamic analysis. And from there, you know exactly the loads acting on your part. You can then take those loads to optimize it. And then you can also conduct a final strength validation on it to see if it would fail during its time in use. And if it doesn't fail during its time in use, you know you've done your job. 
So the workflow and which where it is that we might want to bring uh, MBD into it is at the very beginning. We then take those loads for a structural analysis and then we can optimize it. So why is that? What you know? Why do we want to look into multi-body dynamics? We want to understand different part assembly mechanisms. We want to comprehend our motion characteristics. So we want to see whether if that spring is actually performing adequately enough for the motion of our suspension design. We want to design it for its intended use. So we need to make sure that you know where we have our packaging spaces, we don't start designing out of our boundaries. We want to make sure that each of our parts actually withstand the way it's being used. It's not going to fail on us. And the moment where we start looking at you know spring damper systems as well, this is where we can link it up into Activate, and we can then simulate and understand the feedback loops and the response loops. Um, to understand whether if we need to put more damping, less damping, more stiffness, or left less sorry, or less stiffness with it too. When we're conducting an MBD, we can see the generated loads on each component as well. And once you actually get those generated loads, you can then take it through for a structural analysis. So without further ado, I'll be taking you through a tutorial and how it is that you can start using contacts. Um, but if you do want to look at a suspension design, also on YouTube. So with this one, this is just talking about the basics of Inspire Motion, and it'll take you through in how to set up a a Geneva wheel for analysis. So I'll be taking you through Inspire Motion today. Inspire Motion is our multi-body dynamics tool built inside of our Inspire GUI. Now the times in which you want to conduct a multi-body dynamics tool is when you want to look at an assembly of CAD and you want to look at the reaction forces between them. So at the end of this video, what I should hopefully be able to convey to all of you guys is that we can start looking at implementing some motion between our CAD and seeing exactly how our mechanisms work with one another. And consequently after this, we'll be able to see the forces generated on every aspect of our model within our joints and within our springs that we have modelled into it. You can see the magnitudes and the direction of everything. And once we then calculate all of those forces, we can take certain parts, implement an analysis on it, so that when we do load it up, and we click on play, you'll see it takes every single frame within that motion study you did, and it can conduct an analysis on it. And you can see once it's loaded, it will then start to play the animation again. And you can see the displacement contours that occur on your part. We can change our contours to looking at stresses. So once we let this load to look at the stresses, we can now see the stresses that act upon our analyzed part. So you can see all the forces and the torques that were generated out from the motion study is now applied onto this part itself. And if I were to slow down the speed of our animation a little bit, just to understand it better, we can also change our legends. So let's say if we want to look at anything above one megapascal, we can see how our stresses vary in our simulation like this. You can see every time it pushes it through where the stresses are above one. And we can go through this one again. Scale it up slightly faster. And we can see all of these stresses acting on our part. To the point where the moment it unravels itself, we can see all of the stresses leaving the component. So let me show you how you can set this up yourself also. Now let's start a fresh session of Inspire, shall we? Inside Inspire, once you have it installed, if we head into the View toolbar, you'll see we have a demo browser, and here you can actually access the CAD that we'll be using for today. So let's look at M07, the Geneva will. Just simply drag and drop it in, 
and you can see that we have all of the CAD we need here. So at this part what we're going to do is now simply click on the different CAD parts and you can see this live synchronization in that where I click in the GUI it will show us exactly what it is at the side. So within this tutorial what I'm going to be showing you is the fact that we'll be going across this toolbar at the top here so just make sure that you're using this toolbar at the top and to access it you just need to be in the Inspire Motion tab. We'll go through in setting up the first things we need such as a rigid group, the joints to dictate the motion between different parts, we'll add in some motors, actuators to dictate the motion, we can then also specify some contacts, gravity because we're assuming that this part will be used on earth and then consequently after that I'll show you how you can analyze the motion and do all of the post-processing that you also need. So first things first, what we'll be looking at is using the ground tool and we're going to specify exactly what stayed, what's going to be staying still in this whole animation. So where it is that we want to ground it and where it is that we don't want it to fly off from. We'll come into that slightly later uh, because the first thing we're going to do is set up our rigid groups. Rigid groups are great to dictate exactly what parts are moving relative uh, with another part. So we can specify that this ring here, this will, as well as this partition part in the middle, all moves as one, because we're just going to assume that that's one rigid entity. We're going to assume the same for this cam and this driver as well, and just click create. Once that's done, what we'll then do is click for some joints. Now, as we said before, joints are used to dictate the motion between your different parts. So you'll see that we have the pin that we have here, if you just simply click on these red faces we can specify exactly how, what kind of motion we want to dictate between them so let's say a hinge and we'll also lock it for the time being we can do the same for this area here let's click on it again and specify that there's a pin that holds this top knuckle with the rest of the driver now consequently after that what we can do is also specify exactly how this box will be moving with um, the guide so the slider and the guide itself We'll keep it as translational as the two surfaces can only go across one another and we'll leave it as active. Now last but not least, what we'll also do is specify exactly a pin in the middle here so where we'll be holding our wheel. You can change it from looking from all to single holes and you'll see that it's detected it and we'll put a grounded pin in it. So you'll see that we can ground this wheel in where it is using a grounded pin and this takes us to also using the ground tool and we can ground this guide here. So once that's done what we'll then do is start looking at gravity so let's specify gravity being in the negative z direction which is fine and in Inspire we have what we call the crawl walk run method so let's start off simple to make sure we have everything moving relatively as we need it to be and then we can add complexity as we go through it. So currently we've already dictated all of our joints. Let's just make sure that everything is in place as it should be by clicking on the solve button. And what we will find is that the wheel should stay where it is, the guide should stay where it is, however we should expect to see that the cam and the driver to fall. So let's click solve and as expected we saw this part fall off. Good. So at this point here what we're going to do is also dictate some rotational motion on this part here. What we would expect to see is for it to rotate anti-clockwise and this knuckle here will be in contact with this part. And that's what drives this wheel, this Geneva wheel, to rotate the other way also. So at this point here what we'll do is specify some motion, some motors. Motors are different actuators in that motors would implement a rotational motion. So what we can do is also connect up this part to the slider. Now I can select on the center here and specify that the motor is going to act at the center of this surface too. And at this point what we will see is a motor that dictates the relative motion between them. We can specify the different type of motors that you might want to use and for graphics purposes it is really large currently but that's just due to the graphic details that you apply it to so don't worry about the size 
At this point here, what we're going to do is just specify the motion. Currently, it's got a step profile. Let's make it a step dwell step. We'll have it step on duration for half a second, dwell time for two seconds, and step off duration for half a second. Now, if this doesn't make any sense to you, what's nice is that in these little micro dialog boxes is that it gives you all of the properties around each motor. We can implement motor uh, motion in the form of an angle, speed, acceleration, or torque. We'll keep it to speed for now. And if you click on this table function, you also see your profile editor. So this is what we mean by a step dwell step function. It steps up, it dwells for a little, and then it steps down again. So we keep it as this. End time will be 5, we don't need our animation to run on for too long. And our output rate, let's increase up to 50 hertz. So at this point what we will see is that we'll see this part spinning. Let me hide off this instead. So the shortcut keys to either isolate a component or to hide a component, you can just simply click on it and type in the letter H on your keyboard. Now at this point here we're going to add in an actuator motion, so we're going to specify a displacement of this slider where it will move across to this way after a few seconds of motion. So keep it on connected parts, click tick, and we should see an arrow point upwards. From here we can specify that we want it to move let's say 12 mil, and we can give it the function of step only because we just want it to move off and we can tell it to move off after two seconds or maybe let's say 2.5 okay so once we've done all this we can leave everything as as default it's just a really simple tutorial to show you exactly how you can start simulating the mechanisms between your different CAD parts so once your actuators are done We'll then specify some contacts. There will be a contact between this part itself and this outer part there. So let's create some contacts there. And last but not least, what we're also going to do is also implement contact between this part and that part too. So if I do contacts, let's click on this one. And part two can be this outer ring again. And do create contacts. Now once that's done, yeah, again, just leave everything as uh, default values. Impact is a great contact type for when we have uh, contacts that come in and out of contacts. And after this is all done, just click Analyze Motion. Like we said before, we keep the end time to 5 seconds, output rate of 50 hertz. It basically calculates how much data you want for every second. Now before I proceed, what I'm actually going to change is my motor. So let me just delete that off and try it again. Because what I do really want to do is to have my motor showing and not covering most of my CAD so that you guys can get a better understanding of it. So what I'm going to do is recreate it again. Let me hover onto this center. And there is an intelligent feature recognition tool in Inspire in that it recognizes when you've reached the middle of a line, or let's say the end of a line, the center of a surface, or the middle of the surface as well. So from here, I'm just, I just want the center of this surface, and I'll connect up to this surface too. And with this center, what we wanted to do is same again, make sure it's a step dwell step function. So we'll have it 0 0.5, let's make this one 2, and the step off duration will be half a second again. And once we're done with this, let's solve for it. There we go. Now you can see that my slider has started to move before I've actually been able to wound up my to before I've been able to wind up my uh, wheel as much as I wanted to. So what we can do is go into my actuator here and we're going to go back into the property editor and change it so that after 2.5 seconds of it I want it to step off within half a second. 
Now you'll know that you have the options to, for your animation to start while solving or when finished. I like to do it while solving, so if I go wrong, I can see how wrong I go very quickly. But if you do set it so that it animates when it's finished, it does solve faster. So I'm going to keep it as that for now, and I'm going to click Run. And from here we can see it spinning. It's winding up our gear. So initially we did put uh, just a pin in the middle there. So that you see that there is no sort of uh, wind up. But it has stepped off properly. So at this point what we can do is actually put a coil spring. Let's put a, a torsional spring in the middle of this part here. So let's hide off this part. And what I can do is click on a torsional spring. We can apply it to the center of this face here. We'll leave all of the values as default for now. But now what we will find is that every time our gear turns a little, then there's a lot more potential energy so that at the moment it's released, it should spin quite quickly. So let's solve it again. And this time after the second revolution leads into our third before finally our actuator will allow it to slide off and you can see all of the potential energy that's released in that part for it to spin so quickly okay so once we have all of that we then obviously have an animation that dictates the whole motion for us if you click on any of your parts, it will show you the part displacement, velocity, or acceleration that it undergoes in its motion. If you were to click on, let's say, the motor, it can show you the torque required to power the motion that you need. Or you can look at the speed. So if you're looking at any sort of uh, control systems, you can look at the desired speed versus the actual speed. You can also look at the joint force that's exerted from that motor being there. We can also look at the actuator, the, the force required to power that movement again. In any of the joints that you have, so I can look at this translational joint, you can look at the forces that occur between the two parts when moving. And the same again in the pin, how much is required to keep the two parts kept together. Okay, now if you head into this run icon, this run button here, you'll see it's a drop down menu. I can click on it and look for the force explorer. And with the force explorer, it shows you all of the, the magnitudes of your forces, your torques, in your joints, in your contacts, in your motors, and in any springs that you have throughout the whole time in motion. And if it all gets a little bit confusing, we can always deselect certain values to focus on the ones we care about. So it could be that we only wanted to look at the contact forces. And you can see it work this way. Now once you've conducted any sort of multi-body dynamic analysis, what's really nice is that if you were to click on that part, right click, you can do an analyze part. This will then give you the options in that Inspire will mesh it for you. You can specify what loads you want to use from the motion for the animation, for, for the structural analysis that you want at the end. And I'll just specify to use all 349 time samples. And then all you need to do is click Run. Now, I have already ran mine, so all I need to do is bring mine back on screen and you can see how you can then yet again play the motion and you can see all of the contours that occur throughout its time in motion. So you can understand the stress values that it undergoes whilst it's being used. And this gives you a really good understanding in that should you then conduct an optimization, you know exactly where, which areas of material you should keep and which areas of material you should get rid of to make it lighter but still as but performing still as efficiently as before. Now you'll see that say if I were to click on a part, how we analyze this part here, You'll see Optimize has been greyed out. Now, in order to make sure in that you can optimize it, 
all you need to do is specify in Inspire that that is a design space and what it means when you specify something as a design space is that the moment you then have loads acting upon it you can then actually have the option to optimize the part. Same options again it will take you through a topology optimization or maybe a topography one you can specify the percentage of the total design space volume you want it to use at the end and any sort of manufacturing constraints can also be implemented from the structural toolbar. So you can specify any shape controls, any symmetric constraints as well, just to ensure that anything that you do create can actually be manufacturable as well. And this is Inspire in a Nutshell. Thank you. So just as a recap, uh, why is that we should probably use Inspire Motion when conducting our designs? Now, with Inspire Motion, like we said, once you get all of your CAD in there, you can see how your mechanisms will move, so you can visualize the kinematic and dynamic analysis behind your parts. It gives you a really good understanding, so it knows what your component loads are and how it is that they interact with each other. Do you need to compensate it by changing the size of something, or do you need to change the motion? that's where you get the understanding from. You can take it through straight into an optimization where you can improve your component behavior given its motion. So not only in, in your classic sort of traditional, you know, you can um, optimize based upon its structural performance. With MBD, you can optimize it based upon its kinematic performance. So say if you wanted to optimize it so that it would spin faster, then that's how you can change your different design in that respect. It helps you save time and costs. So where you can get your results quickly and you can derive your different load cases for your different final element studies, it means you don't need to take it through physical testing. As long as you have all the right sort of spring parameters uh, and the different motion kinematics behind it, it can save you that time and cost from having to experiment around to see what performance you need for given your CAD parts. And just so you know, you can integrate it with other software. So you can easily share that functional model between software and your design teams. With Inspire, you can take that straight into our fully advanced MBD solver and motion view as well, where you can start incorporating in flex bodies and you can bring in um, other nonlinear finite elements into that as well. But then you can also take your MBD analysis and send it straight to your structural team to conduct a structural analysis. Now, as we mentioned motion view previously, this is where we have the fully advanced uh, multi-body dynamics with it. So Inspire Motion is great if you want a good, quick understanding of your parts. However, you know, it is limited to looking at rigid bodies only. Whereas if you were to go into motion view, there is a vehicle library wizard in there. So if you wanted to simulate your full vehicle and do a double lane change, you can. You can tell it to follow a guide, a guided path. And like we said, you, know, you can also bring in flex bodies. So if you're expecting your parts to deform th throughout its time in motion, then that's when we want to use motion view. Like we're talking about the vehicle library wizard, you can, you know, you're not just limited to looking at cars. Uh, you can also look at two wheelers and three wheelers as well. You can look at them for your vehicle dynamics and control. So if you wanted to look at your rider machine interactions, your vehicle stability when cornering and control, and any sort of driver and passenger safety, you can focus into that. You can also start looking at the durability as well. So if you're driving over pave or if it's uh, an unsteady surface, you can look at the component loads, the component fatigue life, and any damage that occurs. You can also start looking at the ride and comfort of your vehicles. So where you have the vehicle response to road, your rider response to the road as well, you can also bring in any sort of active systems behavior. So like we mentioned before, all of these models you can link it up to activate. That is the equivalent of Simulink. So where you have your 1D model, you can link up to your 3D model and you can simulate interchangeably between them. So with the benefits of Inspire Motion, you can see from all these examples here, you're not just limited to looking at purely, you know, gears. You can simulate it to understand how much force is required to pick a part up. You can look at uh, an assembly, conveyor belt mechanism. You can look at simulating a washing machine, but you can also start looking at um, 
your excavators and what happens once you optimize them as well. So like we said, with a simulation driven design, it gives you a full comprehension of your designs. It's quick and efficient. It uses motion solve. So this is our full capability and accurate MBD solver. So it's just a different GUI to motion view. But in motion view, you can look at more advanced aspects of multi-body dynamics. However, both of them use the motion solve solver in the background. It can easily take it through to motion view for more complex MBD analysis. So if you started off Inspire Motion, it is uh, a database that you can export out of Inspire Motion and open it in, in motion view instead. And of course, you can start doing optimizations that are derived from your multi-body dynamic analysis. So thank you very much for listening to this part of the webinar.